Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, <clears throat> our next, uh, I would say, metabolic uh, disorder uh, for today is uh, actually post parturient hemoglobinuria, PPH. It's, it's also known as PPH. Uh, name uh, indicates that uh, it occurs after parturition. Um, uh, it's also known as red water and uh, colloquially it's known as rat mutra. Uh, under field condition, we call it rat mutra. Uh, it's one of the major and economically important meta metabolic disease of dairy animals in Pakistan, India, Egypt, and elsewhere in the world. It's an acute disease of high breeding or pregnant animals, uh, specifically buffaloes and cows, uh, which is characterized by hypo hypophosphatemia, intravascular hemolysis, hemoglobinuria, that means reddish urine, anemia, and death. Uh, buffaloes in advanced pregnancy or within first few months of calving are particularly uh, are susceptible. Uh, the disease is far more common in buffaloes than in cows. So, uh, I mean, uh, this, uh, uh, this metabolic disorder uh, I mean, causes the huge losses which are associated with this disease, they may run into several billion of rupees annually in, 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 in Pakistan. Uh, actually, it's a, a disease of high producing animals. It occurs after parturition and is uh, characterized by straining during defecation, red urine, hemoglobinuria, anemia, and death may occur in this disease. Uh, actually, the etiology of uh, this disease, uh, basically the major cause of this disease is phosphorus deficiency. So it is more common in buffalo as compared to cattle. Uh, there are different uh, predisposing factors regarding PPH. Um, the first one can be the diet, which is deficient in phosphorus. It leads to uh, PPH. Um, there is a deficiency of phosphorus in plants like turnip, brassica, radish leaves, and beet pulp, etc. So they are, uh, I mean, uh, deficient in phosphorus and they're, uh, I mean, feeding to animal. It may lead towards this uh, PPH uh, disease, uh, metabolic uh, disease condition, specifically when the animal is pregnant and uh, in the last stage of pregnancy. Uh, after uh, the parturition, if you have already fed uh, these uh, type of plants to animals, uh, definitely they will show this PPH. Usually uh, animal in third to fourth lactation, they are more prone to this disease as compared to the first and second lactation. Uh, actually, uh, uh, another factor specifically, which is related to soil is a predisposing factors. Uh, deficiency of copper in the soil uh, can also lead towards PPH. Copper is essential part of an enzyme, dismutase, which is necessary for hemopoiesis. Um, animal in dry period have normal phosphorus, but lactating animals, they have deficiency of phosphorus and calcium, so, uh, so they are more prone to it. It is more common uh, after parturition, two to four weeks of, uh, after parturition. Incidence of this disease is low, but mortality up to 50%. So this disease doesn't occur in beef uh, cattle. Uh, ingestion of cold water also leads to hemolysis. Uh, what are the clinical findings uh, regarding PPH? The first one is uh, hemoglobinuria, lack of appetite, weakness, uh, it develops suddenly, severe depression uh, in the milk yield, dehydration uh, develops quickly, pale mucous membrane, and the body temperature is 103.5 degree Fahrenheit. Pieces are dry and firm. Low oxygen carrying capacity of uh, RBCs, it will not fulfill the requirement of oxygen. So there will be, I mean, increased heart rate and respiration. So 
uh, difficult breathing and fast heart rate, they are also the clinical findings for PPH. In later stages, there is a joindus, pica may be present. Um, the course of disease is basically three to five days. Animal becomes stagger, weak, and uh, uh, recombinant. Mm. A diagnosis of this disease can be done through clinical pathology, signs, and symptoms. So if we, if, if we talk about uh, the treatment of PPH, the best treatment for this disease is blood transfusion up to five liters to the animals uh, which are suffering from this uh, metabolic disorder. Also, I mean, you can offer sodium acid phosphate, um, 60 gram per 300 ml water, which is given through intravascularly or uh, subcutaneously. And uh, repeat this uh, treatment after 12 hours. The route of administration, it depends upon the severity of disease. Um, 100 gram of this uh, sodium acid phosphate orally can be given for five days. If it's, uh, I mean, uh, due to the soil factor, copper sulfate, it's almost uh, one to two gram orally for 10 to 15 days. It's, it, it helps in hemopoiesis. Beta complex dextrose if dehydration occurs in uh, PPH animals. Um, a very important thing I already uh, told you about the control of this uh, uh, metabolic uh, disorder is uh, that we shouldn't be feeding cruciferous plants. I mean, if, if we have to be, if, uh, if, if we have to give them or fed, feed them, um, then we should offer them wheat bran, which is phosphorus rich diet. Mm, I mean, add that uh, cruciferous plants in, in the, these plants parts. Uh, you can add wheat bran, which is a phosphorus rich diet along with it, in order to cope up the deficiency, which is in these cruciferous plants. Um, the treatment of uh, this disease um, has been, uh, I mean, reported uh, by, I mean, uh, UAF scientist, University of Agriculture, Faisalabad scientist, um, especially um, I would mention Dr. Ghulam Muhammad, Dr. Saqib, Dr. Imad Rashid. So these three scientists, they have, uh, I mean, uh, optimized, uh, developed a cure for PPH in buffaloes and cows. <clears throat> so uh, the standard treatment of parturin hemoglobinuria is based on parenteral and oral administration of sodium dihydrogen phosphate, sodium acid phosphate. Um, so um, the cure rate uh, almost uh, is almost 50% for this uh, treatment. Uh, actually, another flip side of this uh, Therapy is that treated animals, they become off feed and thus sustain a considerable loss of body weight and milk. So it follows that an alternative effective treatment without these side effects should be warranted. Um, that is the stage where our scientists, they come. Uh, they, I mean, tested different, uh, I mean, uh, uh, therapies. Um, and uh, efficacy of uh, an antioxidant uh, therapy in the treatment of this, this disease was uh, um, studied by our scientists. So this de novo therapy is based on intravenous administration of uh, uh, N-acetyl cysteine uh, in one liter of 5% dextrose. And uh, then after 12 hours, the same treatment will be given. So 10 grams of vitamin C is also administered orally on daily basis. Uh, they, uh, I mean, uh, it has tremendous uh, recovery rate as compared to the sodium acid phosphate therapy. Um, Two-day therapy for uh, with the acetyl cysteine and vitamin C, it's it it would be enough. So this uh, new uh, uh, treatment. Uh, I mean, should be is uh, less costly than the standard treatment given uh, in uh, to animals. So the results for uh, this treatment in, in, under field condition have been tremendously uh, encouraging and much better than those with the standard therapy. 
So it should be constructed as preliminary only and lack the packing of carefully controlled scientific products. Uh, so I think uh, uh, this uh, second therapeutic regime should be followed under field condition. It's also very important that we have uh, overcome this uh, I mean condition, metabolic disorder or disease condition. Uh, I, that is all for this uh, condition. Thank you very much.